أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we give thanks unto him I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibad Allah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about the place or position of his beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Verily, in the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a perfect example for you. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهِ For the ones who have the hope of Allah, the hope of the last day, and those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in these challenging, difficult times, It is important that we turn to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to look at the way he behaved and how he handled situations, how he was able to make things calm, how he was able to bring comfort to his companions and how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he demonstrated the highest degree of tolerance but at no time compromised his faith or his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great George Bernard Shah, he said that this man, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a savior of humanity. And he said, I believe that if a man like him were to assume the dictatorship of the world, he would succeed in solving its problems in a way that would bring it much needed peace 
and happiness. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, even those who did not believe in him, those who did not accept him as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they felt in his practices and in his way there was a medium or a way to salvation for people on this earth, that there was a way to bring happiness and prosperity, there was a way to bring peace and tranquility to people on earth. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is no longer with us. But he made a very great statement in his farewell message when he said, Taraktu fikum ma in tamasaktum bihi lan tadillu min ba'di kitab Allah wa sunnati aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I leave with you two things. If you follow them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah in my traditions, that is the practices, the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we want to bring peace and happiness, if we want to bring that comfort and tranquility, To people, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, we need to look back at the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to implement them within our lives. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in the Qur'an that as Muslims, all the time, we need to reflect. We need to evaluate. As Muslims, all the time, we need to take ourselves into account. What have we put forth what have we done with our lives? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqu Allah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun O you who believe, fear Allah and always look to what you are preparing for the morrow. And fear Allah, for very Allah is well aware of what you do. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah is requesting that we Muslims, we take ourselves into account. Today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and regardless if you accept it or you reject it, if you don't believe in it, you know, just a little while ago, we entered into a new year because we know that Muharram, it ushers in a new year. But I say whether you accept it or not, we are living in a different part of the world. And regardless of how we look at it, yes, today begins a new year. And our lives will be governed by this calendar. And so people all over the world, they have reflected and they have resolved, they have made resolutions as to what they want to do 
for 2016, a new year. What is it that we Muslims want to do so that what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was able to accomplish in terms of peace and happiness, in terms of bringing that comfort and calmness, in terms of demonstrating tolerance, what is it that we want to do as Muslims in these parts of the world? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Muslims have not seen in a long time the degree of Islamophobia that it has seen in 2015. About 50% of doctors throughout this country they were discriminated against. 10% of, of, of non-Muslim patients did not want to be seen by a Muslim doctor. Masajid have been vandalized. Muslims have been traumatized and uh, you know, so many different things have come their way in terms of aggression. And this is the type of Islamophobia that I'm speaking about. But look at what others have done for Muslims. Twelve thousand Jews stood up to Donald Trump and they said never again protesting against his fascist statements protesting against his statements that he would like to register Muslims And they knew what happened to them so many years ago in the Holocaust. So they said 12,000 of them never again. Throughout this country, people of different faith they stood up in support of Muslims. When such derogatory remarks were made by Carson and Donald Trump and other political figures, and so Muslims, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, must resolve in this new year to do what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did for people of other faith. There was a delegation that went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina to discuss issues affecting them. And when it was time for their prayers, they requested to pray and the Prophet ﷺ said to them, from, for, to these 60 or so Christians from Najran in Yemen, he said to them, pray in my mosque for it's a place desecrated to God. And this was the tolerance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He taught his companions to love their neighbors. He taught his companions to build a relationship, 
to those who live next to them. He taught his companions that rahmah, mercy, compassion, it is not only meant for you Muslims, but it is meant for the whole creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he taught them, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you except as a mercy to the entire humankind. We have sent you as a mercy to all creation. And not only a mercy to Muslims, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And this was the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He taught his companions that they should not harm their neighbors. He said to them that you are not a true believer if your neighbor next door to you is not safe at your hands. If you feel that he is not secure or safe and you will cause harm to him, that something is wrong with your belief. How often do we reach out to our neighbors? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this hate and fear that is being spread across the globe, Muslims need to, to make it, to turn it around into love and compassion. Muslims need to turn it around into what was taught to us by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the Muslims in Kenya. When a group of Christians were attacked in a bus, it was Muslims who came to their rescue. When terrorists went into that bus and was terrorizing them and wanted to inflict harm upon them, it was Muslims who stood up against the terrorists. And even by standing up, some of them were injured. If you go to the, the, the hospitals today, or in these times of holidays, you would not find so many of our Christian and Jewish doctors. You will find Muslim doctors filling in for them. That's the neighborly love. Give them time to celebrate their, their holidays. Give them time to be with their families. And Islam speaks about family. Islam speaks about coming together. This is one of the foundation of our faith, that we build family relationship. And if we help them to build their family relationship, then we are doing something good for our neighbors. And so thousands of Muslim doctors, they are in hospitals doing overtime so that their Jewish and their Christian brethren can have time to spend with their families. This is the neighborly love. This is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talked about. This is what he practiced. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to turn. We need to turn that hate and anger into love and compassion. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Irhamu man fil ardi, yarhamkum man fis sama. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Be kind and compassionate unto those who are in this earth. The one who is in the heavens would be kind and compassionate unto you. Man la yarham la yurham. And this is another saying of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you do not show love and compassion, you will not lo ha have love and compassion shown unto you. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, going forward, let us, as we reflect Let us look as to what uh, we want to do in the future. And one of the things that I recommend, of course, we need to look at ourselves first. 
you know, the Islamophobia, the challenges, the difficulties, the trials and tribulations, they are all part of life. Fear, hunger, they are all part of life. Allah tells us so in the Quran. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And we will certainly test you with something of fear and hunger. And we will test you through the loss of lives and properties and crops. But give glad tidings to those who put their trust in Allah, they have patience. And so we need to look at ourselves. We know that inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. From Allah we came and to Allah we will return. Kullu nafsin dha'ikatul maut. Every soul will taste of death. That there is a time for us to leave this world and return to our Creator. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we reflect, we need to look at ourselves. How much have I done for myself in, in, in my? How much have I done to my with regards to myself in connecting to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? How much have I done for my family? How much have I done in terms of increasing my iman, my faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Reflect upon yourselves, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Sometimes we get lost in different pe with, with different people and thinking about other people. Sometimes we get lost in, in looking at the challenges and the problems of the world and we forget about ourselves. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tuba ghalahu aibuhu an uyubin nas. Blessed indeed is he who is more concerned with himself rather than with the fears of others. You look at yourselves first. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. O ye who believe, fear Allah and look at what you are preparing for the morrow. Each and every one of us, what preparation are we making for when we will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How did we spend our time? How did we spend our wealth? How did we spend our youth? How did we spend the health that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us? And finally, how did we spend that life that Allah has given to us when death comes? How did we spend that life, my dear brothers and my dear sisters? So as you look forward to the future, think about yourselves and look at what you have done with the amanat or the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, secondly, as we look to the future, I ask you, do not live selfish lives. Make that connection with those whom you dwell with. Make that connection with your neighbors. Make that connection with your peers at school, at work. Make that connection with your colleagues wherever, wherever they may be. Let them understand the true teachings of Islam. Let them understand what you really stand for. Let them understand that this deen of yours, it's a deen of peace, a deen of love and compassion, a deen of kindness, a deen in which you show care for others. Everyone who really, everyone who really practices religion as it ought to be practiced, everyone who is God, fearing everyone who has the love for God 
Understand that uh, you do not have that true belief until you love for people that which you love for yourselves. And if you ask a Christian, you ask a Jew, you ask someone of a different religion, they will tell you the same thing so long as they are God-fearing. That it is incumbent upon us to love for others that which we love for ourselves. And so connect with your neighbors, connect with other people. Make sure they understand what you stand for, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Looking at the future, we Muslims, we are not going anywhere. This is our home. And if it is not our home, it is the home of all these young people who are here today. It is the home of generations to come, generation of Muslims to come. And so we need to make a difference in our home. We need to make sure that our voices are heard. You cannot sit on the sideline and think that, uh, yes, people represent you all the time. You need to represent yourselves. It, it seems that we only want to represent ourselves in the masajid, that we want to become presidents and secretaries and treasurers and imams of masajid. And we forget that the greater representation is in the outside world. How many Muslims are on the school boards? And about 98% of our Muslim children, they attend public schools. How many Muslims belong to civic organizations? How many Muslims are part of interfaith discussions? And we can go on and on. How many Muslims go out to vote and support people who have the same thinking like them or the same values like them, people who can do something for them? You live in America, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and in order for your voices to be heard, you have to be engaged. You have to be involved. And so resolve, make that resolution that for the future, you will be part of what happens here in America. Because you and your children and your grandchildren and generations to come are going nowhere, they will be here in America. And so you want to make America a better place, not only for them, but America a better place for all people. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, As we look to the future, increase your time for Islam. Do you think that you're spending enough time for Islam? Ask yourself this question when you leave here today. Do you think that you are making enough time for Islam? Do you think that you are making enough time for Muslims? You know, being in a small circle, just being attached to, you know, where your family is, that is not making enough time for Islam. Because everyone is part of your family. 
It takes a village to raise a child. We are all part of one big family. And so we all should cooperate with one another. We all should help one another in that which leads towards goodness and piety. And cooperate in that which leads towards righteousness and piety. When you see good being done, you should run towards it and want to be part of that goodness. Spend time for Islam, increase your time for Islam and Muslims, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Our young people are the crossroad. Some of them are on the borderline of, uh, of extremism. We should be able to let them understand that toleration. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions look at their tolerance in terms of the way they prayed, in terms of the way they did certain actions. And they never fought against one another for that. Muslims today were young people, they, they, they're so extreme that if someone does not pray the way they, this, they think it is right to pray, they, they cast him out of society. If he does not do something that they think is the right thing, they cast him out or her out of society. Spend time, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, increase your time so that Muslim women, Muslim girls, and Muslim boys, our young people, would love Islam. They would want to be part of Islam. Spend time so that our Muslim sisters, young ones, would not take off their hijab. Spend time so that our young boys, they would not want to be called Mo instead of Muhammad. That they will retain their identity. Spend time for Muslims, my dear brothers and sisters, and for Islam. This is how we look forward to the future. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, again, We pray every day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Our Lord, give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and save us from the punishment of hellfire. Spend time, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, if you want the good of this life. Increase your time so that you may be able to spread peace and love and tranquility and happiness on earth. Increase your time. Be more devoted so that you make this place a better place for all people. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And that he saves us from the torment of hellfire. Akulu kauli hada wa staghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al mu'minat min kulli them. Fastaghfiru inna hu hu al ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was Salatu was Salam, Walla Sayyidina Muhammad, Walla Alihi, was Habihi, Ajmain, Ridwan Allahi, Alayhim, Alayo Middin, Amma Bad. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah tells us in the Quran, God Aflahaman Zakaha, or God Habaman Dasaha. Successful indeed is the one who purifies himself. 
and the one who corrupts himself, he will be unsuccessful. We, we need to maintain the pure Islam. We, we need to make people understand that it is not only in the books, you know, there are so many learned people in the world today and here, right here in America. If you ask them about Islam, they will tell you that Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of love and compassion and kindness. And they will talk about the dignity and the honor that this great religion brings to humanity. But when they look at Muslims, they do not see that being demonstrated in Muslims. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that we can elevate ourselves by making sure that we follow the pure way that was brought to us by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all want Jannah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. But Jannah is not free. It doesn't, you know, happen just like that. We have to work for Jannah. We have to work for paradise. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullukum yadkhulul jannah illa man aba. Every one of you will enter paradise except those who reject. And the companions, they said, وَمَنْ يَعْبَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ and who will reject paradise? This beautiful place, this place that eyes have not laid sight on and the ears have not heard about its excellence and the mind cannot comprehend its beauty. Who would reject such a place? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ata'ani faqad dakhal al-jannah wa man asani faqad aba aw kama qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The one who obeys me, he will enter paradise. And obedience to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not just this salah, yes, we pray. It is not just this fasting, yes, we fast in the month of Ramadan. It is not just giving some charity and performing the pilgrimage. But obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is very comprehensive. It comes with everything. It is with regards to your relationship to the Supreme, to the Creator, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is with regards to your relationship to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be them Muslims or non-Muslims, how do you relate with them? And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if you obey me, then you will enter paradise. The ones who obey him in every aspect. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Verily, the Messenger of Allah is a perfect example for you. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, he said, and the one who disobeys, he has really rejected paradise. He doesn't want paradise. Let us not be from those who disobey our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we leave here today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, 
resolve to do the things that I have mentioned. Every day, we Muslims, we don't look for special days, but every day we look back at our deeds. We look at what we have sent forth. We follow the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in asking every part of our bodies to take account. We take every part of our bodies into account for what we have done. And Omar ibn Khattab used to say that you evaluate yourselves before your deeds are being placed on the mizan, for before your deeds are being placed on the scale. And at night it is said if he woke up abruptly, he used to take his stick and hit it against his, f his feet and say, Madha amilt al what is it that you have done wrong today to cause me to wake up abruptly? And their companions who to slap against their eyes and say, why did you look at that which you ought not to look at? And that's how they caution themselves in different parts or limbs of their bodies. So we don't look for the 1st of January or the 1st of Muharram or a special day. We take into account every day of our lives. So as we look towards the future, resolve, make resolution that these are the things that we would like to do. And one of the most important that I want you to leave here today with my dear brothers and my dear sisters is spend time, increase your time for our young people. Increase your time for our youth. If you don't give them time, you, in, you, know, you, you may feel sorry for it because not giving them the time will either, they're sitting on the ledge, there's some who will become extremist, and there's some extremist in terms of religion, and there are others who will have no religion. And we have seen so many who have no religion, they have no connection with this deen of ours, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we need to spend time with our young people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength and the ability to increase our time for Islam and Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to connect with our neighbors and to let them see what Islam really stands for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to bring harmony and peace in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to transform hate and anger into love and compassion and kindness. لَقَدْ أَمَرُنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالَ إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله 
إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكم لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون قم السبع بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر